<laughs> Are you they want me. They want hey, this is DJ Scotty with Just Fun Radio, and I'm here with some of my friends with Two Wheel America. I figured Hello. I'd say hey. This is a good friend of mine. She's doing a lot of things with calendars for soldiers. And that's all you got to say? I saw you from the distance. I had, you know. They said, find somebody you know. I said, let's find a hot dog. And that's the husband, right? That's I keep seeing him never yeah. actually married. So anyway, this is Dean, everybody, with Two Mill America. We'll, we'll come back and interview you right. and make you sweat. All right, y'all. Hey, this is DJ Scotty. We're with TwoWheelAmerica.com. I was just kind of wanting to talk to you about what is it that you're actually doing here today? We're collecting money for Patriot Pals. They train dogs for wounded vets coming back from the Middle East. So there you go. You're helping some of our soldiers that have been returned, of course, from their duty. Uh, and, and this is really a cool thing, too, because you're giving them, I'm assuming when I say this, you're giving them a pile as much as somebody to help them do things. Yes. Well, there you go. Well, look, we're going to go around. We're going to talk to a few more people. We're gonna... All right, we're with So Real. They're wanting to do shots. My thing is I was just making the joke that there's no vodka in it yet. you you got to go yeah. to your car. Go to, go to your car for your shot. And, of course, our, our guy here holding the, holding the light, he was doing his shot a minute ago. I wanted to catch him. Yes. Can, can you give me That's your? That's a small shot. I, I want your little pouch of your vodka in your pocket. <laughs> All right, everybody. All right, everybody. This is for so real. So this check is, them this out. Is, this is the healthiest shot we'll ever drink. Right Hold here. on. You need to have one too. So oh, he's gonna, gonna give me drink. one as well. Oh yeah, we gotta. And this get, was for twowheelamerica.com. All right, on Cheers. the count of three, for so real. Help. One, two, three, one, so one, real. Two, three, that actually tastes really well. Awesome. Healthy, good for you. Yes. So you got a dot com that we can visit to buy? Yep. Drinksoreal.com. I'll take this. Oh, you got a flyer right here. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. No problem, man. Good to meet you. All right. Nice meeting you. And also go check out twowheelamerica.com. Oh, Will do. Definitely. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Look, he's got his hat on. Lady in the shot. <laughs> it's, the money, it's the money shot. <laughs> hey, look, everybody. It's Christy. Hi. I have enjoyed the show. With? Law Bike. Law Bike. Look, if you need to go see a lawyer, really, she may not be the lawyer, but she's great representation for the lawyer. So if you need to go check out a lawyer, go check out lawbite.com. Christy is in all the events, her and Chuck, and I'll be finding Chuck here in a minute. If he's not here yet, we'll find him later. He's at the bus. We'll he's at the, the bus. bus. We'll go knock on his door. All right, it's been great seeing you. Bye. All right, hey, this is DJ Scotty. I'm helping out with TwoWheelAmerica.com. And I'm standing here with one of these guys right here, and his name's Todd. And he actually owns all these vintage race bikes. So I was going to let him kind of explain to you a little bit about what he's doing up here and what kind of services that he's providing. And, of course, this is for all you cats that can't make it out here and check it out. Well, we have an organization called Historic Moto GP. And what that is is that's an organization that we try to bring out all these vintage race bikes mm -hmm. and vintage riders in that case. I myself am 65 years old. This bike here to my left is a, um, a bike that I won the national championship with in 1982. Wow. And they kind of about three or four years ago contacted me and drug me out of mothballs. And we recreated the bike. This gentleman over here is the one that built the motor and everything. And he's done all the, all the motor work on these historic bikes here. And we run at Road Atlanta and, uh, and Savannah. We've been to uh, VIR. We've been to NOLA. You know, we run some of the many, many venues around here. It's just an organization where older guys such as myself with some of these historically um, uh, rich uh, race bikes can get out and have fun and be safe. Right. You know, we look out for each other. Nobody's trying to, uh, to, you're not winning anything, no money or anything like that. It's just out to have fun. That's right. So it's all just for fun. So you're just providing, actually, you are with your friends pretty much having a good time. I mean, yeah. typically... In it's, a safe environment. Right. It's, it's, a, it's a camaraderie thing. Uh, everybody's interested in the same thing, uh, and it beats the hell out of playing golf. All right. Well, let's take a look at this right here. What, 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 describe what you've got into this. Is typically what it would maybe be factory, and explain kind of what you've done for all these guys that just are at home. Okay. Well, this essentially started out as a, a stock CB900F street bike made in 1981. All right. Uh, in 1981, we took the bike and we made an endurance racer out of it. Essentially to do that, you have to build the motor, you put different brakes and tires and suspension on it, uh, a few other tweaks here and there, and we went out and won the uh, U.S. National Endurance Championship on a bike like this. It is essentially not that far from being a stock motorcycle. We're still running the stock wheels. Actually, this one still has a stock suspension on it on the front. 
Uh, the brakes and the calibers and everything are still stock. So uh, it's not that far removed from being a stock bike. Uh, we ran 24-hour races, we ran six-hour races, and we ran four-hour races. And, of course, to win the championship, it's the conglomerate of the wins and places that you have with the most points to win the number one plate for the year. After 1982, I sold most of the motorcycle. Uh, didn't do a whole lot after that until these guys contacted me and uh, wanted me to try to put the bike back together. So we found a bike, and uh, Chris Burkle over here from Racing Sports Services in Brazelton, Georgia, mm -hmm. built the motor. Uh, I had the paint work done. Uh, we pretty much created it just the way it was when we raced it in 1982. Well, that's pretty wild to know. You've actually redone what you already had, and you're having a good time. And, and the benefit, like I said, that you're having a controlled environment where people can get out and have a good time and not have to worry about doing the stupid street racing. So you're, you're providing them a great service. So if anybody wanted to contact you, how can you suggest would be the best way to get you? Okay, you want to contact Bill Brown at uh, Historic Moto Grand Prix. Uh, I need it. It's... Uh, I can't think off the top. Well, of we head. can get a card. I just want to make sure we got the name out so that if anybody wanted to just find them on the internet, they could. You can you can patch in uh, the email on your when you show this thing. I just on the top of my head can't remember hey, what I'm it is. I, sometimes you get thrown in the deep end. We're here today. All right. Well, thanks for checking us out. I'm gonna grab this cat right here because he doesn't even remember me. What are you doing, man? This is one of my good longtime buddies that's in a heating and air business, and he hasn't seen me in years. He actually rides a Harley, him and his wife both. Yeah. Uh, how, how are you finding everything here at the show that you want? So far, so good. So far, so good. So far, so good. <laughs> he had no idea. I got him by surprise. He's over here talking to somebody. He has no idea. Well, I'm actually here to see somebody, Doug Roberts. All right. Well, I just figured I'd say hey. Yeah, man, thank you. It'll be a Look show. You. You're going to be in shock in a second. He's going to be like, this just finally hit me. I realize what I'm doing. All right, well, thanks for tuning in, y'all. We'll come up with something else. What you doing, man? Nothing. All right, hey, this is DJ Scotty with TwoWheelAmerica.com. We're checking out this guy right here. He has got some really cool bikes. If you want to pan over there and look at that, these things are changing colors. It's really cool, as you see. I was going to kind of ask you, how is it that you can provide this? How does this actually work? Uh, they're LED lights encapsulated in a polyester takes uh, several coats and a lot of blocking and a lot of, lot of elbow grease. So a lot of hard work. To a lot of hard work, that. exactly. Well, that's pretty cool because what you're doing is you're providing something that no other LED is going to be able to do. I mean, not at all. This is true. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's one of a kind for sure. We uh, came up with it about two years ago. Uh -huh. and, um, and How did this come about? A friend of mine, that's his bike right there, wanted to uh, do a light-up paint job. So we started... So brainstorming on how yeah. to do it and I came up with the process and it's been going ever since and uh, getting a little bit better evolution yeah, yeah we were just checking that one out that's pretty neat I mean all of this is pretty neat don't get me wrong the fact that you're making a tank light up is pretty friggin cool and especially with the way they want to try to get you on the laws about your LEDs shining that's kind of hot because you can't really say that's a light bulb it's not shining this is true this is true now with it being blue, I think if you put it in the strobe mode, you might have a problem. Yes. But other than that, yeah, we've been riding down to Florida, Daytona, and everything, and uh, we've had cops pull us over to check it out, but uh, nobody's ever given us a ticket or anything. Right, and, and see, what I noticed is, like, I had blue LEDs on mine, and as long as I wasn't strobing, I was legal. Correct. But I just got told by one of my police officer buddies that now in Georgia, you technically can't have a blue LED light. So... It has to have the ability to stroke. And, well, the way I look at it is they ain't seeing a, a bulb on that. You know what I'm saying? Oh, this is true. I mean, so for sure. Yeah. You're able to beat out that little technicality if they yeah, don't they, know the law. They would have to rewrite the law, for That's sure. That's right. That's right. Well, all right. Well, thank you very much for kind of hanging out with us. What we're doing is providing a service for a lot of guys at home that can't come out and check this out or a lot of people live too far away. So thanks a lot for enjoying. Make sure you get the name of his company on there. Like, throw yourself a shout out one time. Uh, Paulies.com. Check us out. Paulies.com. Give him a shout. Thanks. Appreciate that. Hey, this is DJ Scott Allen with TwoWheelAmerica.com today, kind of helping out. I run into some of my friends I haven't seen in forever. Uh, are you having a good time? Are you finding all the things you're looking for, checking out the vendors? And I see you've already got your free grab bag. Yep. Yeah, having a good time. So you'll go see all the lady stuff, sunglasses, jewelry. They're getting all quiet on me, but I've seen them. They're very loud. <laughs> yeah, we'll definitely hit all the, uh, all, the, all the clothing being used for sure. All right, y'all. Well, I'll let you go. I just figured we'd do a little shout-out with these guys because I know them. But uh, we're, like I said, we're trying to make sure all you people at home get to check all this stuff out. You see the, they've already got the grab bags ready, so they'll go buy our tent and get some more candy as well. 
All right, well, we'll see y'all soon. So anyways, hey, this is DJ Scotty. I'm with TwoWheelAmerica.com. I'm just kind of hanging out, and I see some people I know. Uh, are you having a good time here? Are you checking out the vendors, finding everything you like? Looking pretty cool, looking pretty cool. Good turnout. Over here checking out the bike show parts now. Yeah. yeah. That looks about like something you'd ride. Yeah, pretty much. Around the neighborhood. Around the neighborhood. <laughs> the neighborhood. All right, well, we're just kind of checking in what, what the service is. Is they're providing a service on their dot com for people who can't make it to here and enjoy the same things that we get to. So I figure since I'm turning on lights and people are running, i got to catch people I know. So I bought, I bought a helmet and a purse. Yeah, we're, got, some good, got some good deals. We're racking up over here. Well, we keep laughing because I'm seeing the give bags and they're just getting full. Yeah, Candy, yeah. giveaways. So there you go. All right, everybody, thanks for tuning in. All right, hey, this is DJ Scotty. We're hanging out here at the Great American Bash. Uh, I'm standing here with one of the leading motorcycle lawyers around this town. Anybody that with any sense knows who Steel Horse Law is, this is the man. I'm at most of the events, and I don't even get to see you, so you're pretty busy. So anyways, I was going to just kind of check with you, see see what your interpretation is with this law, with all the new bike things that have changed, kind of let these guys know out there about, you know, they're, they're enforcing the helmet laws, et cetera. Just kind of your feel on things. Well, what we're finding is, uh, especially coming back from the big uh, – bike rallies in Florida, they're, they're stopping bikers and they want to see if they have those DOT enforced, uh, approved motorcycle helmets. And that, you know, they're actually, for once, they're involved and they want to stop people that don't have what they're supposed to have on as far as safety equipment goes. Oh yeah, and see another thing too is say the baffles. I never really considered the baffles. I always liked, you know, you wanted to be heard. Yeah. But they're actually enforcing that, headlights, etc. cetera. And, and then how about this? people getting in wrecks you know that's that's your main thing right there is these poor guys that are getting tagged by people texting and not paying attention and I see the videos constantly happening so I figured you know what is your ideas on that if somebody gets in a wreck what is the first thing they need to do if their bikes down well you know look uh, a lot of things they, they they need to do you know they need to make sure that they're not injured of course. Uh, of course. Uh, they need to memorialize the damage on their bike. If they're not injured, they need to take some pictures right away right. of the damage. They need to consider the equipment that they have on, you know, their, their jacket, their helmet, uh, their gloves, you know, big things, little things. They need to make sure they have a list of everything, a receipt of everything that they could have. Uh, and then later on, when we help them out getting their property back, then we can prove what they have and how much it costs and how much they're owed. Right. And, and now, how about this one? This is just one I would personally think. Nowadays, with your cell phones and cameras, is yeah. it a good idea that as everything's happening, take some photographs, make sure that some of your things are actually notified, mentioned? That, and just, you know, I, when it comes to the law, I'm a DJ. If, if I need to know something, I'm going to have to figure out what I need to do, and I need all the suggestions I can get sure. before this happens. A cell phone is a wonderful way to have a list of what you need to have after it happens. Right. So if you take a little preventative medicine, do it ahead of time, get the photos of it, have the receipts, have everything documented, that makes your life easier and it makes our job easier too. All righty. Well, give us a minute. We may be back with some more. Hi, right, we're here we are again. We're with Two Wheel America. We're just kind of going over some stuff. This gentleman right here is part of this association with all these really old kick butt bikes. And I'm gonna kind of let him kind of explain what they do, exactly what kind of association they are, where they came from, and what kind of service they've kind of provided for the community. Well, we are the Greater Atlanta British Motorcycle Association. And you can find us on our website, which is Gabama, G-A-B-M-A. And you can find out more about us if anybody's interested. It's, it's just a loose association and club of folks who like British bikes and old bikes, not necessarily just British bikes, because we're going to look at some uh, other bikes here that are not British. But uh, for the most part, we uh, do, or we're just a club. We like to ride, we get together. It's a family oriented thing, there's no initiation, you just apply and uh, you know you can become a member. Uh, we brought out some of our bikes here that, that uh, belong to the club members. Uh, we have here an early Triumph Bonneville. This is called the pre-unit Bonneville because the motor and transmission are separate. Later on the Triumph built the motor and transmission together and we'll look at one of those. But that's a pre-unit Bonneville with a sprung hub. This bike here is a Velocet Clubman. That's a 500cc single, and uh, Velocet was famous for its racing motorcycles, uh, especially the Venom. 
The bike next to it is a Vincent Black Shadow, 1951 Series C Black Shadow. Vincents are legendary. They were a 1,000cc V-twin, and they were guaranteed to go 125 miles an hour from the showroom floor. If you can imagine going 125 miles an hour on 1950 tires and 1950 roads, that took some serious dedication. Oh, yeah, that was some guys right there that had balls of steel, so to speak. Exactly so. But uh, the Vincents would go 125. Every one of them was tested up to full speed before they were sold. These bikes are pretty rare and pretty valuable. The bike next to it is an Aerial Square 4. That's a 1,000 cc. It's a four-cylinder, and the cylinders are arranged in a square pattern with uh, two crankshafts. The front crankshaft turns backwards and the rear crankshaft turns forwards and they're geared together. So it's a very, very smooth and powerful ride. The aerial's claim to fame was you could go from 30 miles an hour to 100 miles an hour in top gear without ever downshifting. It has that much torque. So they're, they're a pretty smooth ride. The bike next to it is a Chinese copy of a BMW. And then down a little bit, we have a um, Honda Cafe racer that belongs to one of our club members. Hold on. Well, it's, it's pretty neat when you think about it because you take a guy like me. My father and you are riding these bikes. And a guy like me that doesn't know that much about it, I'm just now starting to get where I appreciate the BMWs and, and the BSAs that he's working on. And it, it's just a whole different thing. You know, it's not so much speed. It's not so much the whole hot rod look. You're just getting into an all-around awesome, good-looking, smooth-running bike. Well, that's true. And all of these bikes here are riders, although they, they are in show condition. They are, they are riders. Of course, you know, they're put up for the winter so they don't have gas and oil in them. But, you know, they're only fluid and a kickstart away from taking them out and riding them on the road. So it, although they're, they're show quality, they're also riders. And anybody that owns or rides one of these old British bikes will tell you that it is continuously a work in progress. Yes. They're that's, never done. That's what my father says. <laughs> His is constant. Well, hey, we're going to cut for a second. We'll go over here and look at some more bikes on the back row. All right, we're back. I just wanted to kind of cut loose for a second and get off the front row to the back row. So we're going to let him kind of point out this Norton right here. Sorry about that. That's fine. Um, this is a 1973 Norton 850 Commando. These were the last of the model runs for the Nortons. They uh, quit building them in 1974. This one is um, is uh, got the disc brake and it's an 850 cc. Next to it is a 1969 BSA 441 Victor Special. Those are the uh, single cylinder 441s. They're uh, dual purpose bikes, off and on road bikes. How much were they? Uh, the the uh, 441s, when they were new, were about $1,500, but now they're worth about five to $6,000. That's a great increase, isn't it, now? It is. It is. All of these bikes are becoming, you know, you just don't have them anymore. They're not made anymore, and they're all appreciating in value. Next to it is a Royal Enfield. Royal Enfield was a British company, and they built uh, singles and twins for a very long time. They kind of went out of business, but an Indian company bought the rights to the motorcycle. And so now we have Royal Enfield singles that are being built in India, and that's what this one is. This is a relatively new bike, a 2004. And it's pretty neat because I've never seen one except on television. So it's kind of cool to know I'm standing here, and here it is right in front of me. Well, you can buy those today, those 500cc single Enfields, and they make wonderful commuter bikes there trouble free and a lot of fun to ride. The next bike up is a 63 BSA Rocket Gold Star. Rocket Gold Star is an extremely rare motorcycle. It was the most high performance BSA available in its time in 1963. And uh, this one has been restored by the owner and um, it's a very, very valuable motorcycle now. It's probably worth in the neighborhood of $30,000 or thereabouts. Good Lord. Yeah, they get up there. That is pretty fascinating just to realize that it's that old and look at the condition that it's in. And it looks like it could be ridden every day. It could. It, it could. It starts and runs. The next bike up, this 1975 Norton Commando, is um, if you look at the uh, left side of the motorcycle, you see the bump there behind the cylinders. 
that's an electric starter. Those are very rare, uh, the lo only the last of the uh, commandos and the electric starter uh, commandos are very much in demand these days. So this is about an $8,000 motorcycle now. And next to it is an even more rare Norton. It's a Norton SS with the high pipes. And the SS is, uh, as you can see, the, the exhaust pipes come up on the, go high on the uh, uh, right-hand side of the motor, the left-hand side of the bike, and uh, have the heat shields on them. These bikes were built as on- and off-road competition bikes. And if you look, you see the, the uh, guard, the ring guard around the headlight. <clears throat> um, they are a fairly rare motorcycle, too. That bike is probably worth about 10000 today. Next to it, we have a BSA Lightning. This is called an A65 Lightning. It's got the two carburetors. And this was restored by the owner, who's also a member of the club. And it's a, a complete restoration, and it's absolutely a gorgeous machine. And um, I'm not sure that it would be for sale at any price right now. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you, my dad has been looking for that and finally found it a couple years ago. And it's in the basement being restored as we speak. He's going to love meeting you. I'm going to make sure you two find out who each other are. No problem at all. The next bike up is a Triumph Bonneville. This is, I mentioned the earlier, the uh, pre-unit Bonneville. This is a unit Bonneville with the engine and transmission together. This is um, the height of the uh, Triumph Bonnevilles when the, the best and most desirable bikes were built. Um, and this was one of the last of the bikes before they started the oil and frame bikes, which are not as uh, desirable. So this one has the original color paint and is a um, uh, added complete restoration. The next one up is a custom motorcycle. <clears throat> it is also a, a unit uh, Triumph Bonneville, and it was built um, by the president of our club, Randy Hyatt, is at his shop, which is British and American Motorcycles. And you can, uh, if you're interested in getting a bike built or talking about getting a British bike fixed, Randy is your go-to guy. Um, the next three, we have uh, three more Triumphs. Uh, the first one, again, is a Bonneville that's completely restored. The next one up is a um, Triumph TR6, which is the competition version with the high pipes, and it's been beautifully restored. And the next one up is also a TR6 with the high pipes. So these are all, um, the, the TR6s are competition bikes meant to be ridden on and off-road. And uh, these bikes have been completely restored to as showroom condition and um, are ready to run. Well, they are definitely beautiful bikes. I'm sitting here looking at them now. They are just amazing. It's, it's well put together. And now these two little bit red bikes right here, this is what the, the, the two gentlemen to my left are just insisting that we look at. These are some amazing bikes. And I actually was telling a story earlier about a friend of mine who, when he was, he's in his 70s at the moment, when he was a kid, he stole one of these. Is that right? And he rode it, him and his buddy destroyed it, and he is now a millionaire. And the cool thing about it is he actually found one, rebuilt it. He bought two, but he took one back to the guy he stole it from and said, I owed you this, and it was well over 50 years ago. It's amazing to even see these things. Well, you know, these bikes here, these Cushman scooters are near and dear to my heart, too, because that's how I got started in the motorcycle. Uh, my first ever uh, two-wheeled vehicle was a Cushman scooter. And these were part of my teenage years. And, you know, some of us have a hard time letting go of our teenage years, yes. so we keep our toys with us. The first one here is a Cushman Eagle, and it has got the standard Cushman motor and the standard Cushman two-speed transmission. Um, it's had electric start added to it. Um, but other than that, it's, uh, it's a complete original Cushman. And unbelievably, these bikes here that sold for five or six hundred dollars um, when we were kids are now worth ten times that much. Oh, yes, they're, definitely. they're you know seven eight thousand dollar bikes uh, just for these scooters, and the one next to it is a Cushman Eagle that's been hot rotted. It has what's called a Vanguard engine. The Vanguard is a V-twin air cooled uh, motor 
that puts out a way more horsepower than the uh, old Cushman's ever did, and um, it'll go mighty quick. It has electric starter, and if you look, it's got uh, hydraulic disc brakes front and rear, um, and it's it's mighty mighty quick for for an old Cushman. And the the last bike down is a Whizzer. Now I, again, these were part of our of our childhood years. Uh, when you could buy a Whizzer kit and you would bolt the Whizzer motor to your Schwinn bicycle and you were ready to rock and roll. I mean, you could go down the road. And that's, a, that's an early, early Whizzer there. That one there has a two-stroke motor. Some of the Whizzers came with four-stroke motors. But it's all the same thing, a little motor bolted to a Schwinn bicycle and uh, you had wheels. And see what's funny is one of my buddies got very one, one just just about like that. Let me word it that way, hanging in his garage, and we're laughing because his kid wants to ride. And he says, no, you're not. That's mine from when I was a kid. Well, look, I just want to tell you, thank you very much for having us out and taking a look at this. This will be on their .com, so a lot of the guys that were not able to come here today will be able to check it out. And then people like me that just don't know a whole lot about this classical kind of stuff. Let me get my words right. So, anyways, thanks for having us. It's great having you to, to explain it to me because now I can go home and tell my dad I know something. Thanks a lot, y'all. All right. Glad to do it. All right, hey, we're back. I just figured it would let this guy right here kind of explain a lot about what y'all do. Give me a kind of paint us a picture of what your business actually is and the, and the benefit behind using you. Well, you were just bringing up a really good point about what you what you need to do if you were ever involved in an accident. One of the biggest things that we like to do is go around and discuss to individuals about how they can protect themselves before an accident even happens. Uh, George and I spent a lot of time going around to Harley dealerships, to other, to, to bike events, to explain to people how to make sure that they're protected in case you do get involved in an accident. And one of the main things you can do is look at what kind of insurance you have. Oh, you want to You want to make sure that, God forbid, you, you do get hit, and you get hit by somebody that isn't insured or is underinsured, yes. that you are protected and have your own uninsured motorist yes. insurance. And we spent a lot of time going around and explaining this to people because the problem is, is most people that, that don't do this in advance, you get into an accident and, and it's too late. Yes. All of a sudden you realize that you don't, you're out of work for two months. Mm -hmm. You've got hospital bills that are piling up. So if you, can, if you take some time now and go look at what you've got mm -hmm. and make sure that you're protected to cover yourself, it can save you a lot in the long run. Yeah, because I'm honestly just going to say this, as stupid as this is going to sound, when I bought my bike brand new, I got insurance on it, and I re-up it every year. Yeah. I can't tell you what's on my insurance well, plan. That's, and that's the thing. It, the first thing I say every time I go and, and do one of these insurance seminars is I ask everybody to raise their hand. Everybody in the crowd say, if you know how much uninsured motorist coverage you have right now, raise your hand. And you know how many hands get raised? maybe three or four out of 50 or 100. That's Nobody insane. knows. And, uh, and it's dangerous. And it's not something that your insurance agent usually goes and tells you because it's their own coverage. But it's a lifesaver when you need it. Right, right. And it just sounds smart to me. I actually got some insurance on, a, on an RV. Yeah. And they said, do you want uninsured motors? And I didn't think about it. But then after I hung up the phone, I thought, I wonder what I have on my bike. And getting hit in my bus is one thing. Getting hit on a bike, that's that could be my life. It could be. But now at the same time, another thing that they're not going to tell you is sometimes you can use all of your cars and, and, and use all these policies together and stack them on top of each other. Same but uh, Exactly. And that's why we try to do this. We want to get people We want to get people this knowledge before they get into an accident so they can make sure that they're protected. Well, there you have it. Listen, it, when it comes to what we do, we know what we do. If you want to get the professionals, you need to contact the professionals. Let them help you do your job because when it comes to the facts, we don't know the facts. These guys deal with this every day. This is what they do. And if you want to contact the people, these are the people to contact because I know if I get in a wreck, I don't know who to call, but I know which number to dial. Don't get off. Then I bought a big this is DJ Scotty. I'm with Two Wheel American right here. They are an online magazine, basically, and I am standing here with the Dangerous Curves. I'm going to kind of put them on the spot and let them explain to you who and what they are and which one wants to be the one. Hi. My street name is TC. I am a member of the Dangerous Curves, and our club is an all-female motorcycle club. Sorry. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hey, honey. But um, our main goal is to ride as women as a group, 
have fun, get other women into the sport. And in the meantime, we sell calendars for benefit that we call Curves for Kids, which buys Christmas presents for needy kids in the Gwinnett and Atlanta area. We also do Curves for Cancer once a year, which is a benefit for people that we know personally that have been touched by cancer. And um, we're just a great group of women who love to ride and love to get other independent ladies out on bikes to ride also. And I can also testify just by what I see on Facebook, because God knows, you know how we are at Facebook. These ladies ride everywhere. I actually was checking out not too long ago, y'all's picture with the whole waterfall. I mean, so anybody with any sense, ladies, get on their page. You can see all these amazing pictures. Also, you can get a hold of their calendars as well. So... You know, DangerousCurvesMC.com. Make sure I get that right as he's panning around. And Facebook. Let me make sure and then, you know. So anyways. We are involved in a lot of charities, so we appreciate the support. Every time you come out to our event, you're going for a good cause. And if you're around the Buford area, always pay attention if you're around the Buford area. They do lots of big things with... Uh, the American Legion up there, sorry. So if you're from the Buford area, make sure you find out who the Dangerous Curves are. Check them out. Anything else? Um, just be safe riding. Have a great riding season, and we will see you all out there. All right. Thanks for tuning in, y'all. Go in. You ready? All right. Hey, this is DJ Scotty. We're sitting here with Two Wheel America again. One of the guys that we actually know is an insurance agent. And I thought, man, how much better would it be to discuss motorcycle insurance and also the fact of people that may not have, say, uninsured motorists, things kind of paint a picture of why it is important. Well, it is important to have uninsured motorists because there are still a lot of uninsured drivers on the road. But more importantly is to make sure that you have the added on option on your uninsured motorist coverage because that means that your limit is added on to the other driver if their coverage is not sufficient. In other words, it's stacked on top. And a lot, about 40% of the drivers on the road are carrying minimum limits. So if you don't have uninsured motorist or underinsured motorist, you need to make sure you've got it and make sure it's the added on option and not the reduced option. Of course. Hey, this is DJ Scott again. I'm with TwoWheelAmerica.com. And, and of course, you know, we like to interview all these cats that are hanging out here today and enjoying their day. I'm standing here with one of these new guys here, and I say new, he's new to me. So I just kind of want him to kind of paint a picture of what him and his club are about and some of the charity work that they do. Hey, this is, my name is John Estes. I'm with We Need to Read. It's an organization where we give back to the inner city school kids with different reading programs that we do. Like, we got a reading program coming up at um, Martin Luther King High School. We're going to give away $10,000, $10,000 of our own money. And basically, that's what we're about. We're just out here just having fun. And we have different literature or whatever. And we're going to have a ride on um, April 27th, leaving from Stone Mountain, Harley Davidson. That's it. All right, and I can tell you because I do a lot of work with them. You go up there, Stone Mountain Harley Davidson takes care of everybody. So that's where I recognized y'all's name from when I first saw you. All right, well, thanks for tuning in. If there's any information you want to tell them to find you, to how to find you on the net. They can find me seven days a week at Harley Davidson of Clayton County down there in Monroe. You can find me seven days a week down there. And they're sponsoring our event next month. <laughs> so I'll yeah. see you then. Thanks for tuning in. All right, hey, this is DJ Scotty. I'm hanging out with these girls right here, and I was going to kind of get them to explain to you what it is that they actually do besides just see the pictures on Facebook and calendars. Hi, yes, thank you. Um, my <laughs> name is Danielle. I'm with Pinups for Soldiers. I'm the vice president and co-founder. This is Dina Stahl, and she's the president of our organization. This is Brandy, one of our volunteers. And what we do is we raise money to uh, send care packages to troops overseas. Currently, we're supporting over 400 troops. Uh, at this point, our next big push is going to be for Easter care packages, so we're looking for donation items. We're always looking for volunteers, uh, and we're also looking for girls for our casting call for our 2014 calendar. So check us out on Facebook. It's facebook.com, pinups for soldiers, uh, and you can keep up with us there. All right, and I do definitely tell you, you want to hook up with these girls and see all the things they do. And if you're in the Buford area, I see them a lot up in the Buford area. So everybody, thanks for tuning in. Check out twowheelamerica.com.